now we're going to set up a workflow and connect our audience to our app uh, in order for the integration to uh, to be working. So you've connected your app. You only have to connect it once, which is the nice thing. That's why we did that separately. And you only have to create your audiences once, and then you can mix and match um, the different audiences to the different apps. So uh, first thing we want to do uh, from the dashboard is to click on Automation Builder. Uh, sometimes this will be hidden. You can click the little carrot to open it up. You click on Automation Builder, and then go to Create Workflow. And so here, you're just going to give it some type of title. Um, here, um, I'll just say example, um, Apple audience to um, Google Sheets. And I'll create that. Okay, and then it loads me right into the app. I can still access everything over here if I just scroll over there. In this case, um, what I'm going to do is I've got these two different uh, cards that I can drag onto the screen. So audience trigger. So I'm going to drag that over here. So as the audience updates, it will trigger and push um, into your connected app. So audience trigger. Now I can go ahead and say, well, grab my um, capital audience, and then I can drag another app on here. And I can connect these two and then say I want to send it to my Google Sheet integration. Now go ahead and click Save on both of those because I updated it. And you can refresh your screen to know that everything has stuck and that you saved everything and that it's good to go. But now uh, simply those are connected. So whenever um, the audience gets updated, it will push it now into my uh, Google Sheets integration couple of things to note about um, connecting your apps. If you're going to connect a webhook, then um, here's a webhook that I can test. And um, I get this uh, fire test data. So actually, let me go ahead and do that in a different app. So I'll do webhook test. Okay, and so I'll drop my connected apps on here and I'll go to webhook. And okay, it'll give me this test here. All right, so now that I have this test item here on my webhook, I can just go ahead and click fire that. Um, oh, I got to connect an audience. And then I can go ahead and fire that. Uh, oh, let me save both of these. <laughs> and then fire it. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a response 200. If I get anything else down here, it basically means that the firing didn't work as planned. Either the audience um, wasn't connected uh, properly or the webhook wasn't set up properly or something of that nature, and you'll have to look at the error code that, that you get in response to firing the uh, test. Um, and then make sure you keep fixing whatever's there until you get that response 200, which means that it was successful. We pinged the webhook, and we're actually, every time you fire this test data, it's actually going to just grab the, um, a record from your audience and ping the, the webhook. That's going to allow you to get actual legitimate test data, and you're going to grab that. And um, say if you're using Zapier, you'll be able to configure Zapier necessarily uh, in order that um, you're actually grabbing the proper properties and linking them to whatever uh, other system that you're sending to in Zapier. Um, that way you don't have to wait for the automation that's running in the back end to actually process and fire. You'll just be able to go in and say, okay, test, test, get it all connected and configured and go from there. Now, if you're connecting um, to Facebook ads or if you're retargeting through email, whatever you might be doing, um, the webhook's probably the best way to go. That way you can send it to Zapier or Make and then be able to connect and clean the emails or clean the phone numbers and then send them on to your call center or send them on to your um, Clavio or, or MailChimp or whatever it is that you're connecting there. So just to jump back real quick, I'm gonna go back to the audience builder and go back to my example. Um, webhooks. Um, I can click here and just edit this title if I want to edit the title. I can right click on the card and then I get this little button up here. So right click, right click and delete the card if I don't want it. Notice it's saving back here. There's also a couple icons down here which you can zoom out if you've got a lot of complex stuff going or zoom in. 
And uh, to be honest with you, I've never really tested the search button there. <laughs> so anyway, now that I've got this connected, um, it's probably a good idea to keep a single workflow for um, each connection that you want to do. However, it's totally uh, fine. I, actually, in my workflow, I just have one workflow, and I've got like five different integrations going to where I can connect, 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 and uh, pass the data through those systems. So um, you can also set up, if you have more than one audience in here, if you want to grab like some other audience you have, you can connect multiple to the same application uh, and send all your out apps out through the one. Um, you can also um, do it in reverse where I might have, you know, uh, multiple connected apps and then send that audience out to multiple connected apps. And each one of these um, lines is called a task, okay? So each one of these lines is going to be processed individually. That means if I um, connect this audience to Google Sheet, and um, then what's going to happen is that it's going to make sure that the entire audience, no matter when you connect it, is passed through this task to the connected app. So if I delete this connected app and create a new one to the same app, what's going to happen is it's going to restart my connection. And it's actually going to... Um, uh, everything coming from this audience will be resent to this same application. So if you're doing a webhook over here, then um, it's going to send the entire audience out through that webhook. No matter when you created the audience, uh, no matter when you connected the app, um, it's going to make sure that the entire audience is sent out through that app and it timestamps everything and basically says, hey, this task, um, we ran up to this timestamp and then it keeps running uh, all the data out through each timestamp block every time the, uh, the job runs. It, it catches you up to date. The first time it runs, it's just going to pile everything out. Um, a, a word of caution when you're using Google uh, Sheets that... Um, uh, about 50,000 records is um, what the Google Sheets can handle before your computer really starts to slow down. When you get to 200,000 in the audience, it's just completely unusable. Um, Google Sheets just completely freezes up, and it's worthless to access through anything else than the, the other than the API. So if you're going to be using Google Sheets or something to pass through, this, um, you're going to want to, like, copy that data out or or rename the the google sheet uh, is a good good one um, when getting your data out that way uh, it'll just create a new google sheet if it can't find it and um, an update with the latest um, batch pool so that's that's kind of the best way to go about it um, just remember that but other than that i'll leave specific notes in each one of the different connected apps in the documentation so if you have very specific things you can go in there and, and post about that <clears throat> 